Every now and then you come across something very, very special, some real mountain bike gold, outstanding in performance and yet not based on fool's gold, no celebrity part, VIP suspension or megastar paintworks. In this case, some brushed aluminium. Now, being silver in colour and relatively low on price, some people might associate this bike with being second rate, but not at all. This bike is a proper nugget. Some of you might think I'm kidding, maybe? Okay, on paper, and quite possibly in the hype that swirls around, this bike is mechanically and possibly intellectually inferior to some of its stablemates and giant. It has no gold, it has but one battery, no plastic, no electronic suspension brain. On paper, it has less power, it has less travel than its other full suspension stablemates. It also possibly has no authority to be hanging out with his headline colleagues. Or does it? Now, Giant described the Stance E as an ultra-capable EMTB, one that can tackle everything one would encounter on a typical e-mounted bike adventure. So, despite this bike being three times less expensive than all its other full suspension stablemates, are Giant actually implying that it can live with all those other bikes out on the trail? Well, why not? After all, the Stance E Plus is from a super prestigious brand. But this bike doesn't have any rockstar parts that push up the price and potentially enhance the performance. Okay, so what's it about? Well, 125 travel rear and 140 up front. It's got a 625 watt hour battery with the option of either having a 500 or an 800 in that down tube. But the most important thing is some absolutely amazing geometry and sizing. It's true, the more plastic and batteries that a bike has, the higher the price. The more dials on the shock absorber and the fork, the higher the price. And the more gold, copper and oil slick on a bike, yeah, you guessed it, the higher the price. However, do not think for one minute that this bike ain't top brass. And it's mostly true what giants say. What do giants say? Ah, yes. A giant say that this bike is very much at home on flowy XC trails. Check, very much check. Multi-use paths, check. More technical single track, check. Oh, and there's one last piece of key detail which Giant point out, that this bike can tackle everything, yes, everything that one might encounter on a typical off-road adventure. Now, let's hold our horses here for just a second because uh, we've just come back from arguably one of the most inhospitable and remote parts of the UK on this bike. So check out that video in the northwest of Scotland to see just what this giant stance E can do. Oh, there's one thing. I want to be very straight with you guys. Um, now, in as much as giants have invited us to shoot the video on this giant stancy and it does say so in the disclaimer down below blah 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 uh, i want you guys to know that i'm here to answer any question you want to regarding this bike so if you have any questions like i said uh, get involved in the comments below and uh, hopefully i can help okay back to the bike now i guess one question you might want to ask is why would you actually go for this bike when there's other bikes such as the trance the trance advanced and the rain on the market i'm sure it's a very difficult question to answer given the volume the sheer volume of e-mounted bikes on the market at the moment because let's face it it's true the wheels go round and round and the shock and the fork go up and they go down it's got a giant sync drive motor developed in collab with a mighty yamaha a decent and battery and apt to fiddle and fret with. Hell, it's even got a display which some of its more expensive stable mates do not have. Well, the answer to that question of why you might want to choose the Rain or the Trance over this bike 
is quite simple, and that's because they have extra millimeters in suspension travel to suck up and sponge the nastier pieces of ground you might encounter. So is that it? Well, yes, but then again, that's not entirely true because I have never come across a bike with this amount of travel, which is such a workhorse and is simply so capable because what it lacks in travel, it actually makes up for in some fantastic geometry, which I'll come on to in a bit. Um, oh, I've got one thing to uh, own up to. I've actually cheekily set, uh, put a set of uh, 2.6 tires on here to maybe give me a few more millimeters of travel. Is it cheating? Your call. Hey, listen, I'm not joking about the tires. It actually gives you, like, if you've got like a 2.3 compared to 2.6, you've probably got like 20 mil more travel on the bike. Uh, right, I mentioned geometry. This bike's wizardry, if you can have wizardry on an e-bike, is actually the geometry. So let's get some perspective on that and let's do a comparison with the longer travel stable mate, the Trance. Now, oh, crikey, giant might hate me doing this, but I'm gonna do it nevertheless. Um, right, a comparison of the geometry of the Trance Trans Limited, let's go for the Trans Limited, the top end bike at 13,000 euros, right. Uh, head angle, um, 66.5 on the Trans, 65.8 on this bike. Uh, the reach, 480, 485, they're around about the same, but the big difference is on the two bikes are actually on the wheelbase. Now the wheelbase in size extra large on the Trans Advanced Limited is 1275 millimeters. On this bike, it's over 1300 millimeters. So there's, there's almost a 30 mil difference there. And the good thing about that is that the chainstay, now the chainstay on the Trans is 447 millimeters, which is kind of average for, for an e-mountain bike. But on this bike, it's 468. Oh my God, many of you are gonna be saying that is way too long to have on a mountain bike. But remember, the front of this bike from the bottom bracket to the front axle is actually 30 millimeters longer. So there's actually a really good balance on this bike between the front center and the rear center. But not only that, it's actually got a 40 mil drop on the bottom bracket, making it pretty low and therefore fantastic at uh, a cornering and descending. And if you look at this terrain behind me here, very technical, almost kind of World Cup standard, this bike can actually deal with that terrain pretty well. Uh, right, a few uh, details of the Giant Stance E. First of all, the suspension travel, I did mention earlier, 125 rear and 140 mil up front. Look, it's not what the Trance has got, but nevertheless, as I mentioned, it deals with that with uh, fantastic geometry. It does have 29 inch wheels, so when you're in terrain such as this rooty ground here, it actually gives you a good rollover. Uh, suspension design, it's a single pivot flex point, so it uses the flexing qualities of both the uh, seat stay and the chain stay. Uh, and in doing so, it actually eliminates lots of uh, complex pivot points. And for a bike of three and a half thousand pound, it's, um, yeah, it's bang on. Uh, some other details. Now, Giant in the marketing uh, described this bike uh, for people who want to get involved in bumpy back road adventures and commuting on dirt tracks, as well as the other things I mentioned earlier. I mean, who actually commutes on dirt tracks? Anyway, nevertheless, uh, there's a few details such as mountain racks for fenders. Uh, and also there's uh, a mount here to have a kickstand on the bike, would you believe? Now, a major point of difference between the Stance E and bikes such as the Trans, the Trans Advanced, and also the Rain, is the motor. Now on this bike is the giant Sync Drive Sport motor compared to the Sync Drive Pro motor on those other bikes which I mentioned. Now this motor is, wait for it, sonically tuned. So that's because it's able to deliver quiet and smooth performance. In other words, it doesn't scare deer or foxes. I actually really, really like this uh, sport motor, uh, even though it's actually on paper 75 newton meters compared to the 85 newton meters on the pro motor. I think it's smooth, there's a really good natural feel to it. And when people talk about natural feel on an e-mounted bike, 
What it actually means, it doesn't do anything which sort of scares you or overpowers you. You can always keep on top of the cadence on this bike. And um, when we actually did a hill climb head-to-head uh, -head a few weeks ago, we actually were faster on the sport motor compared to the pro motor. So there's food for thought there for sure. The battery on the bike increased density, low weight, which is good for safety and impact resistance. Now, I've just come back from Scotland and we were staying in a hotel. The great thing about this is, Super easy to remove with the, with the Torx and also a little button on the top of the top of the battery there. You can take the battery out, take it to your hotel room, and you can actually charge it with a little adapter which a giant supply with the bike as standard. Um, great thing about this bike, uh, you can either have uh, a 500 watt hour battery, a 625, or actually cheekily, I put an 800 in this bike. So the range on this bike with the low torque is really good indeed. Uh, elsewhere, we've got um, the Smart Assist on this bike. So Smart Assist is kind of like, it's kind of like the automatic mode on a car. So the great thing about that is it always chooses the right amount of power that you need in different situations. So it's good for economy uh, and it takes the guesswork out of being in the right mode or not. Got the, uh, the ride control dash on here. So you've got your cadence, your speed, the battery, uh, your mode, your range, uh, you've got walk mode. And you've also got the potential to connect to a heart rate monitor should you need to. And as I mentioned, all the details, the metrics on an app for you to fret and worry about or indeed plan your next mountain bike ride. Look, main message from me is this bike might be a third of the price of some of the other full suspension bikes, but it is not, I emphasize that, it is not a third of the performance. I think that's it, folks. Hey, listen, I cannot, I cannot overemphasize just how much of a fantastic, fantastic all-rounder this bike is. It's the main reason that I was so eager to shoot this video for you, to give you well, to give you a great option if you're if you're new to e-mountain bikes or looking to upgrade a bike, it's fantastic. Actually, in terms of upgrading, there's so much upgrade potential on this bike. Look, there's a very basic rock shock shock on there, very basic fork. I don't think you need to upgrade it. It deals with the terrain, you know, perfectly well. It's got a seat dropper. It's got fantastic brakes. You've got great uh, rotor size on there. Um, I just love the silhouette of it. I think it's a really nice looking bike. It's got. Um, you know, the tech on it is super up to date, both in terms of the battery and the motor and the software and the app and everything. I think it's a fantastic buy. Remember, there's a, a couple of different models in the range. This is the, the higher end one, but um, you know, same, same motor, same battery, same geometry, same aluminum frame material. And uh, yeah, the bottom line, same performance for a bike, uh, which will definitely stay and keep up with bikes of, uh, you know, three times the price in, in most terrain. Giant, you've done a stellar job. Thank you.